Welcome back to Beards and Bruce. Hey, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe and follow buttons and ring those notification sounds. Not only does it help us out, but you'll know exactly when we have another one brewing. Fellas, the buzz is back. This is going to be Stone Cold. I know there's mixed feelings on this movie, but man, oh man, just the opener with this 110% stolen from any and every Steven Seagal movie you've ever seen <laughs> was fucking great. Much all of this was stolen from any Steven Seagal movie, except instead yeah. of Steven Seagal, he said, you know what, guys, this movie sucks too much. Give it to a football player. Dude, you just unlocked the secret code. This is a Steven Seagal movie before it gets hijacked by Steven Seagal. This is the raw husk before he just shoehorned into it. <laughs> uh, Could you imagine that scene where there's, you know, during the robbery of the grocery store in the opening, he's like, yeah. I'll buy the cookie. And then he just breaks his arm and puts his head through the fucking Gordon fish sticks. <laughs> we have to talk about this whole scene. Like it opens up on some just like your regular old run of the mill 80s supermarket. And it's kind of whatever, you know, you, you expect the good guy to roll in, in this case, the boss. But, like, he's just so fucking out of this world, dude. Like, he doesn't even belong in this movie because he just rolls up looking like, I don't know, Highlander 2. Fucking <laughs> yes. But, like, during this robbery, there's no way he didn't notice these people holding hostages before he decided to go and eat some fresh made cookies. And I don't know about y'all, yeah. I have never huffed food. Oh, no. They got me. I sniffed the coffee back when they had the coffee ground. So, yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. And under that same logic, how could they not see him walking through? Like, he's 6'4", big guy, dressed as a hefty bag. Like, it's pretty fucking hard to miss. Okay. Uh, the wife pointed this out. Whenever he's walking around, the villains as well, you can notice that the shelves are stacked entirely too high to hide them from one another. I guess so. I kind of thought like it was the movie's way of showing all the product placement, just getting that shit over with. Because like I was like, Batman oh wow. cereal, Batman cereal, Ghostbuster cereal, honey, Tide is on sale. You got all those Ritz crackers and Ruffles chips that are about to get mowed through. Hilarity ensues in the way that he beats these people up, and the main bad guy, <laughs> who as soon as you see this main bad guy, quote unquote character. He looks like he should be named Viper, like 100%. Like, when you look at him, mm. that's fucking, like, he's got the snapping fingers, jazz hands, Viper. They were doing some kind of shtick to where, like, they had their own, like, bad guy personality, but it's so odd, right? Because you have, like, these dudes that are quote-unquote trying, and then the boss walks in like a monolith, and he just, he, I don't even know if he touched them. He just, like, they just get dispatched. It's almost like they threw themselves out. The last man certainly does so after he beats up these guys in whatever way it is he drops some pickles or something on the fucking floor and this guy is just one like he is committed to this run i don't think i've ever seen oh, someone yeah. besides steven seagal run so fucking hard in a movie and he slips in whatever this is home alone style fucking legs in the air head is almost hitting the ground into a display of soda cans while brian bosworth sits on the edge of just some little mini freezer, just like fucking Earl from Tremors. I got a question. All right, so this is three guys robbing this little fucking supermarket. How much money are they expecting to get out of this? Can't be more than a couple hundred dollars, and they're going to split it three ways? Hmm. So it's probably like a market in small town America, so I'm thinking at least, uh, I'll say shade under a hundred bucks and a packet of Twinkies. Mm. They were walking out of there for sure. Those fresh made cookies, and that's why he went after Boz. <laughs> that's what they came the whole time. They're just there for the bakery. Yep. Guys, get your guns. I need some Mrs. Fields. It's just like a kerfuffle at the bad guy <laughs> HQ. It's like, buddy, they didn't put holes in the donuts this week. Ch -ch -ch. Time to fix some pastries or some shit like that. Him's gonna have his bits all over the wall. Oh. But you're right. The police arrive, and it's that classic, you know, Bosworth's too fucking badass of a cop. How are you going to explain it this time to the chief? Mm. Clean up on aisle four. Oh, that was so <laughs> bad. It was so bad. Even when the title, when it popped up, it was just like, font. I was like, man, there's just nothing here. This whole movie is just the bare minimum to be a movie. Joe, what the hell do you think you're doing? You know you're still on suspension. What do you do? Stone cold. <laughs> doesn't even get a chance to reply the title is his response 
Yeah. It should have popped up with Alabama Man. Alabama Man. Alabama Man. And, you know, that comes up because, like, after they sort this whole situation out, whatever you want to call it, they have to, like, call on him again. They surprise him at his apartment mid-morning shake or something like that. It's for his, uh, his little monitor lizard. I thought he was making that for himself, too. I thought this was, like, a protein thing. Oh, is he's that what like, Yeah, he's throwing, like, eggs and like, the whole ass shell, and he's got, like, hot sauce and everything in mm. there. And I'm like, what the fuck is this guy? He, like, pours it into the little food bowl, and it's like, come on, Rover, get on over here. You gotta eat your morning whatever. I thought it was a Komodo dragon. That's what I thought it was. Yeah, I called it a monitor lizard, but I am not a herpetologist, so it could be fucking anything. So, like you said, there's a knock on the door. The lizard smells the food. It ain't eating that (laughs) shit. And who's at the door? It's the dude who ate Jason's heart in Jason Goes to Hell and Glenn from Raising Arizona. Very true. And then for some reason, he grew out his pompadour looking like Egon or something like that. And man... If there were ever an Academy Award for just not giving a single shit in the movie, 1991, that's all him. Like, okay, I'll give this guy props for being an actor in the movie, which is, <laughs> that's more than I can say for a lot of these guys, the star included. But the character that he plays as an actor, it's kind of insufferable, isn't he? He just doesn't like being alive as far as I'm concerned. You know, just like, like the fact that he has to be the boss's handler, for lack of a better term, you know? But, like, this guy's, like, an FBI agent, supposed to be, like, this grizzled fed, but he's like, ooh, I don't want to get my hands dirty. He's he's fucking a confirmed hypochondriac, and he's like, I, I can't touch oh, that, or yeah. I'll be thinking I'm sick all fucking week. <laughs> Imagine you have to go on this hardcore mission, and the guy trying to help you is just a depressed Howie Mandel. Oh. Yeah, they go out to the bar to, like, try and pretend to be, like, bikers or whatever, these tough guys, and he's just like, can I have a glass for my beer, please? It's... Oh, this is a fresh glass. This one's got some fingerprints on it. I almost thought the bartender was just going to drop a hard F-bomb on him. Yeah, you yeah. fuck. So we find out that he's being blackmailed by the FBI because his dick is so big, he's the only man who can stop these renegade bikers who are just oh, killing yeah. politicians. I do love the explanation because, like, you know, they all huddle around like, Hey, Buzz, you know, out of all the guys in Alabama, you're the most racist looking we have. I feel like that's pretty much it. They say that, like, hey, you busted the most bikers in all of Alabama, but really it's like, this guy's, like, made out of muscle and he kind of looks the part already with that fucking glam mullet that he's got going. Think about this. We're going to get the guy who's busted the most bikers to infiltrate the bikers. Yeah. I thought of the exact same thing. Like, that doesn't Mm. make a lick of sense. But it is the bikers in Mississippi. It's a whole state over. Oh, right, right. They won't won't recognize him 50 miles away. Yeah, once we cross the state border, my face is completely different. I mean, I get it. It's just video game logic. You know, once you break that line of sight, all the cops are just like, well, I guess we have to give up. Those 28 murders or just have to go in the books. (laughs) Yep. Not guilty. Moving on. And he goes into this fucking strip club, and we have William Forsythe, who I think has become one of my favorite actors over time, just because I fucking hate the way he looks. Yeah. And every movie <laughs> he's in, he's just so fucking scummy. Like, him and Lance Henriksen in this movie are competing for who looks the greasiest. Well, I mean, the fact is, like, they are the fucking core of this movie. Like, if anybody's put on a performance, it's these two fellows. I actually didn't even recognize Lance Henderson for like 20 minutes. I was like, holy fuck. Man, is he just like trying. Yeah, honestly, I didn't either. Like, uh, first time I saw him, I just thought he looked like Don Daryl. The other one's like a, a more leathery Willie Nelson. Dude, I had the same thing. Because like, I didn't know it was Lance Henderson for a while. I was like, man, that dude is Wheelie Nelson. <laughs> that's we good. all know that's that that's Ed Harley. Dude, that's Ed fucking Harley. brilliant. I love it to death. But no, like he, he, he plays a true to form. He's just like the grizzled old... I don't know, neo-Nazi that owns a bicycle, motorcycle. A bicycle. Motorcycle. Just that bicycle gang. <laughs> Just Nazi ching, ching. bicycle gang. Get in a basket. Just to knock plot out of the way, they're at this strip club to find out how they can get an in. He's going to go and fuck with Forsyth. But this whole shit gets so weird because the strippers are the stars in this. And it's just like every fucking Seagal movie. These ladies are out there shaking their tits and ass. Mm. And Brian Bosworth is playing it so cool. And every piece of fucking booty in there is like, he's so amazing. And we get to see as some trucker comes in. He's like, I want my money back for my speed. And you see the fucking gentlest 
fucking throat grab. He's like, I'm going to get you. And you can actually see the guy go, boop, so soft. <laughs> Man, there is a lot, by the way, if we haven't covered it, there's a lot of gratuitous nudity in this. Just Dude. like 15 seconds of ass and titties just for the hell of it. Got to buffer that runtime somehow. Dude, you hit the nail on the head. Like, we are legitimately in a strip club right now. But it was not until a little bit later when they go to a bar and there's a chick playing pool is the most aggressive titty I've ever seen in a movie. Oh, this isn't okay. even a strip club. This is just a regular ass bar and she's got her titties hanging out. It was like a booby trap. It just sprung open. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. And then I noticed on her breasts, there were two little rectangles of dark color. I went, what the fuck is that? So I had to rewind it. And again, she's playing pool. She's wearing a vest. She's like, yeah, you know, like the Hulk and titties just explode out. Yeah. <laughs> and then I realize what the two little strips are. That is where they have taped the vest to stay in place. And she has to forcefully thrust it open. But the tape has been applied to the black of the vest so many times that it's picked up the black. So now she just can have two perfectly black rectangles on her breasts absolutely oh. why you listen to beards and brews for investigative journalism like that dude it's all about you know the titular stuff right mm -hmm. yes gotta get to the nipple of things i mean the point okay just a malfunction she's all right I'm gonna have you get naked back. by the end of the scene <laughs> i mean the boss tried to get himself naked pretty quickly so maybe oh you're talking about that banana hammock <laughs> no you're right you're right like not to rewind a little bit but like that fella the fbi fella shows up to his apartment and he's just like hey boss i'm here to talk some business and he's like all right whatever but why cut the him in just like granny panties and i was just not ready for it bro all right you have a monitor lizard and you're fucking junk like he squats down to feed this thing and it's just like if you've seen the episode of rick and morty with the aquaman reference and it's just his bulge sticking out yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's that. It's awful. I'm not going anywhere near that lizard like that. No, he's going to he's gonna think it's like a robin's egg or something. Oh, he's <laughs> like, mm, look at that nest. Ooh, ooh. Anyways, they start brawling in the fucking bar. And Boz, of course, has to jump in and help him out. And William Forsythe ain't having it. He's like, fuck you, pretty boy. Stay out of my business. Which makes sense. His character makes sense throughout this entire film while everyone else gets enamored. He's like, no, this dude's clearly a fucking cop. I think that's the only cohesion this movie has. Like, this guy, he clearly knows something's up. Like, this guy's like an outsider. Suddenly he's doing everything. And I couldn't think of a real good reason why Lance Hendrickson was just like letting him be basically second in command. Other than he's beautiful. This guy's so fucking sexy, I want him on my team. Not only does he want him on his team, he wants him to fuck his girl. Like, he's like, yeah. here's my house mouse. Come get it. <laughs> it was fucking weird. But yeah, I get it's it. weird. I don't get it. It's fucking weird. Well, you see, when you get a certain level of scumbaggery, you like to treat your subordinates like currency. Mm. He's paying him in street meat. I don't see any cows walking around. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so, uh, like, Boz has his lizard at home? That's her. That's his lizard? The lot lizard? Oh, um, his lot lizard. <laughs> <laughs> he sh just randomly shows up at the biker rally to do biker things, and they <laughs> let him win every biker competition. Yeah, there's no setup for any of this stuff. Like, he legitimately shows up in the scene in the same way the audience gets to react to it. Like, oh, he's there. Okay, he's doing something. All right. Now, what? He's doing the next thing. What? I'm this new guy. I'm just coming into this biker rally that's only for this specific racist fucking biker group. I'm going to come in and I'm going to win all the prizes. Nobody's taking home that big Bugs Bunny but me. I, yes. I almost, I almost kind of just wanted him to just like, yo, know, stone face as he was. He's like, I'm just here for road rass, kicking ass. And then oh. he just like zooms away. But like, it literally turns into, hey, you're tough. Come fuck my old lady. And he's like, I can't. <laughs> I respect women. I dude, this, he is so progressive. I mean, look at that hairdo. He, he's just there. And Forsyth's like, dude, he's a fucking cop. And Lance Hendricks goes, no, he's not. He's fucking totally badass. <laughs> he's just projecting the whole movie. Yes. I did enjoy the ineptitude of that whole thing. Just that whole thing. Like him beating up the guy, no resistance whatsoever. He gets a little jelly coming out of his nose. And he does that little motorcycle race, and it doesn't even tell you, show you any way of how he bested the other guy. He just, like, rode Drove next faster. to him. Yeah, he just, like, rode next to him for a minute, then he just went about his way. Yeah, and William Forsythe was like, damn it! <laughs> but, like, what? 
Is that how you win races? You just drive cautiously? You drive beside him for a little bit, and then when, you know, the time is right, you just drive faster. That's all you got to do, obviously. Oh, okay. Right, right, right. It's all about family and, you know. Um, family. 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 Oh, family. Family. Death in the family. I'm sorry, <laughs> yeah. Paul Walker. But the next thing that I have is what, uh, what Chains has been waiting for this whole time. Boz has a package for him. He sure does. Oh. It's in that banana hammock. Yeah. <laughs> All right. This scene is so good, in my opinion. Not Brian Bosworth, but Lance Hendrickson. He's like, I brought you something, Chains. He throws this package at him that looks like a uh, paper grocery bag. He's like, <laughs> what the fuck's in here? A letter bomb? That shit away from me. And throws it and it's like, somebody else opened that. No, it's totally solid. Like, I guess that's the movie's way of showing, like, okay, he's kind of comfortable with the buys, but still, like, he's a new guy. You know, let's feel him out. Oh, what's in the yeah. package, fellas? It's a government issue bulletproof vest. Because whenever you check inside, it says "made by FBI." <laughs> why is it? Why is it government issue? You're a cop, man. Like half of this shit's government issue. We get all this stuff. Yeah, I know. Like half of these dudes look like they shop at army surplus. I don't see the issue here either. <laughs> He's like, "Oh man, let's play dress up. Put that shit on." And then he fucking shoots him. Listen, what is that supposed to prove? He just puts a bulletproof vest on a fella and then shoots the vest. Which is bulletproof. And, you know, question mark, it, it question worked. mark, profit. Bingo. He was making sure he wasn't giving him some faulty gear. And he's like, all right, I guess it worked. That's a little bit more trust. But then Bosworth just immediately is like, that's it, brother. And he fucking hawks out and body slams him on the pool table. And that's yeah. all it takes to get Lance Hendrickson to cream his pants for this man. And he's like, let him go. That man's got some balls. It's time to be balls to the wall. Speaking of walls... What I've got here today is from Brewery X from Anaheim, California. What I've got is Where's Walls? This is a West Coast style IPA, 6.7% alcohol by volume. You got a lot of that floral hoppiness, not a whole lot else. No tropical flavors or any looniness like that. No, no fruit juice, no candy corn or whatever else. It smells like a regular ass IPA. There's actually a good bit of like malt sweetness to it too. So kind of middle of the road, not bad. Well, speaking of hoppiness, I hear you can't buy it. But you know what can? A gallon of PCP. Uh, I don't know what they were talking about. P2P, and is that a type of mess? I always thought it was peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, <laughs> but here we are. Yeah, so he's got to go and retrieve somebody for Lance Hendrickson on his custom art bike, which is a skull with his exact mullet on it. Yes, I'm glad you brought that up. That was just... An insane detail. <laughs> yes, and I love that he looks like a cross between Patrick Swayze and the Hulk. So, I wasn't really following exactly what was going on in this part of the movie. I mean, that's uh, next thing I know, he goes to this nightclub, and he's he's trying to get this guy's ear or something. <laughs> Dude, Ugh. now there's a lot of stuff that I can just describe. Of oh, well, that's a choice. His his outfit at the club is just i don't know man he's like he just tried to steal bruce lee's look when he's trying to be sharp in a black outfit well the other guy was chippendales the other guy's the guy that i thought had the questionable fashion choices he looks like chavo or whatever from system of a down except he instead of system of a down <laughs> he joined jimmy buffett's band oh <laughs> It's it's a mess of a scene. He just walks in, smashes the dude's head off the fucking counter. He's like, take a bow. And then he suddenly has a cadaver ear tattooed like his as he's like, you're deported. Yeah, and it sets off this like weird like early 90s CSI moment where they're trying to just investigate the tattoo, replicate it properly, and do all this crazy stuff. I'm just we like... We gotta take earprints. Yeah, I was like, uh. this <laughs> is just not even necessary. Like, at all. <laughs> But, like, he gives himself uh, up. He's like, yeah, I'm a cop. Yeah, and I caught you. Uh. And then that, I feel like that's going to come back. He probably shouldn't have done that. He's the worst cop in history. And we'll talk all about it. Because, like, everything he sits out to do doesn't plan out. Everybody he's trying to save, they don't pan out either. Oh, no. it was actually this point right here. I wrote it down. This is when I realized that uh, Chains, that was Lance Hendrickson. When he's calling the Biloxi police to be like, hey... Uh, run a search on John Stone, because I bet he's not just John Stone. That's such okay. A, like, I understand, like, he's gonna have connections, got his finger in everything or whatever, but, like, that's like saying, like, hey, can you run a search on John Q. Public? That could be something. 
Could be elite. Could be anything. It's such a just whatever name. John Stone. I had such a good chuckle at the moment he's on the phone. He's like running NCIC on whatever. I'm the guy from Millennium. And then he hangs up the phone <laughs> and William Forsyth just hard staring at him. And he just goes, <laughs> just sashays away from him. And Forsyth starts to laugh and they leave it in. <laughs> I like their chemistry. They're trying. Them. They know the material that they have is complete and utter horseshit. You know, they're just this is a paycheck and I do not hold it against anybody. The, the chemistry that you talk about, I feel like, especially between those two, is more like, um, well, that that's my buddy, and now my buddy's hanging out with another buddy, and he's not so oh, much my buddy anymore. 100%. 100%. Because Bosworth comes back with the ear or whatever to prove that the job's done, and Lance Henderson's like, let me see that. He looks at it and he goes, ooh, smell that, and starts trying to fucking wave it into his house mouse's face, and she's like, oh, it's so gross. And she's just so ungrateful because he was trying to give her a fresh new set of earrings. What a bitch. Oh, yeah. It, it just came off a dead ear. It's all right. Her indifference is what sold it. Because, like, you know, there's another person's body part being toted around her face very closely. And she's just like, guys. Yes, it's 100% that girlfriend who's used to this shit, but she's over it. So he's like, smell that. And she's like, quit, Lance. <laughs> Fucking quit. He's like, all right, baby, I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, that right, kind of happened later. On, that kind of happened later on the movie too, where just the rest of the fellas, like I know it comes to like a burning point later on, but they, they run into some like army fellas, like just basically massacre them. And everybody's just like, yeah, yes, that's what we do. Question mark. <laughs> yeah, most of them are kind of on board, but there's a couple that's like, is this? Are we cool with this? You guys, are, am I cool with this? I'm, I can't tell. <laughs> oh, what was that one dude <laughs> that was kind of funky looking? Kind of looked like his main job is a clown. You know, the dude with like yes. the ring here. <laughs> his I'm thing like was just. Yeah, he was just, the whole time, was like, this ain't the biker way. You can't do this. This isn't us. We're civilized. Now, go paint some swastikas on shit. For real. Like, you are literally a neo-Nazi biker organization that collects dues from people. You beat innocent people. You're, you're out there killing people. Like, this isn't the first murder. Like, the movie opens. The whole movie is taking place because the head of the biker group blew away a preacher for whatever yeah. reason. Well, the reason was, hey, look, plot. It came back. But the reason is because the state is about to put away, like, the head head honcho. Like, the big guy. Like, the dude, I guess, is in charge of, like, all the mafioso type shit. You know, he got uh, slammed with something. And the guy running for governor is, like, the lawyer trying to put him away. And the judge found him guilty. So they found the judge and they fucking blew him up. <laughs> put a yeah, bomb on his boat. And William Forsyth sitting 30 feet away on the other side of a lake on an idling Harley, like... Yeah, <laughs> with a stogie, too, because he's ballsy. <laughs> he smoke whatever he wants, and he's going to smoke you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> yeah. That, in turn, gives you the rest of the plot of the movie. So they got rid of the judge. People are a little scattered, but they're going to assassinate the guy running for governor or what have you. And he had some, like, wacky fucking schoolyard name, did, like Slick or... No, he's the whip. Whip. He's the yeah. whip. Yeah, he's he just guy. happens to be district attorney who's prosecuting. Yeah, he's the guy that just, like, blasts fucking Devo when he walks on stage. Hell yeah. I mean, that's Rack. way better than whatever shit Hillary Clinton was putting on. God damn, I'm tired of that song. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Brian Bosworth is still trying to get his in with this group. And so now he has to go collect money with old girl, whatever her name is. Doesn't yeah. matter. It's not and Jennifer Connelly. That's just what I have down. She wishes. She does. Just because she has dark hair. No, she's like um, she's like Nicole Kidman, but like dressed as Jennifer Connelly, if that makes sense. Mm, I get it. Yeah. I was getting some like worn out Liv Tyler vibes. Oh, it's it's just Jennifer Connelly after Requiem for a Dream. Oh, <laughs> after what her uh, character went through. Yes. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's pretty much spot on, actually. Let's go with that. Now... He has to go collect this money, and the bad guys throw a grenade and blow up one of the bikers. And then you get to see... <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> it's just cool. so random. He's like, grenade! Dude, I have never heard of a grenade having a sec like a half a second fuse. Like, he just toss it. Boom! Immediately. Like, the it's most ridiculous... Grenade. Like, the most ridiculous thing about this scene for me is we literally meet this guy. He's like, hey, my name is Tool. And then immediately, <laughs> at, like, five seconds later, no shit. Oh, I chuck a grenade at him. No more Tool. I mean, kind of. He, he got got, but he's still around. And I don't know what the movie was trying to communicate to me. Because, like, you know, he is Lance Hendrickson's son. 
I get that. He gets blown oh, really? away. Yeah, totally. Because, like, you know, they go to the hospital. His face is all fucked up. He's a little charred. And Lance Henderson just tries to, like, force him to take a bride for whatever reason. But, like, how they communicate all this is so fucking bizarre, right? They, I think they want me to feel bad. But the yeah. way they're doing it just makes me feel like he was raised by a bunch of, like, circus folk. Yeah. yeah, it's like these guys are the bad guys through the movie, except this time, like, this this guy's, you know, blown up and his whole family's coming to see him. So maybe have a little sympathy, you son of a bitch. <laughs> but it was, like, backhanded, right? Because the kid's legitimately in pain, suffers, like, Dad, kill me. It's like, nah, whatever, here's some free ass. Also, is yes. it just me, or does this guy look just like if you combine Two-Face and the Joker? <laughs> he just had that big fucking Cheshire smile. Yeah. I don't like the way I said yeah just now, but... <laughs> you want to try some out? Just yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now let's move on. Use whatever you want. Now we get a big moment. All right, the mafioso guys are there, and they got to prove a point. Since you blew up their boy, they're gonna kill one of your boys. Who, whoever it was, I don't know. It didn't matter. But they go into this Italian restaurant, and he's like, "I got a present for you. I'm from Millennium. Don't worry about it." And he sets down. <laughs> <laughs> sets down this present and they open it and they take it out it's this full face mask uh biker helmet and lance henderson takes a fucking breadstick and he's like come on don't be stupid tap 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 open it up it was like an arbitrary amount of time like as soon as he put the helmet down like there's a there's going to be a bloke in there like yep. just fucking 100%. show it yep and what's in the box yes <laughs> exactly and i'm just like why are they just playing coy like they're all pieces of shit i feel like they kind of know the language here and like 10 minutes later, they finally open it up. And it's just some cross-eyed dude. I'm like, who is that? And is he important? The answer is next scene. I still yes. don't know. I okay. still don't know. I want to I wanna talk about the fact that there has to be outtakes. Because when they flip the visor up, this is clearly a man under the table with yeah. his actual head in the fucking helmet looking off to the left with his cheeks all squished up. I lost my shit. And nothing to explain. Like, was yeah. that like some kind of like barter or like some kind of like honor thing? You know, I don't know. <laughs> it's just some dude. Was that one of the Italian guys? Is that just some dude? Is this a threat? We'll never it, know. It makes no sense because, you know, the bikers guys got hurt or whatever. So they kill one of their guys and then they meet. They go, hey, by the way, let's 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 do a drug deal. <laughs> You just killed one of one of our guys. You want to have like Olive Garden? <laughs> Olive Garden sounds great. I love their breadsticks. I get, you can I dip get. it in this vial of PCP. All right, I, I have to tap the brakes a little bit because Brady, when you said like, "Hey, you guys want to do a drug deal?" That was way more convincing than anything the boss did in this movie. Because he literally rolls up with that PCP or P2P or whatever you want to call it in a vial. He's like, "Yep, don't ask me how I got it, but I can get you a hell of a lot more than that." And then Ed Harley just like, you know what? I've known you for exactly three days. Let's do it. Not only does he have the vial, but he says he can get them 30, 55 gallon drums of it. Seems like a lot of drugs, guys. Like at this point, I feel like he could have said anything, like any form of volume. Like, hey, I have 20 desks of PCP. And he was <laughs> on board with it. <laughs> But now they're going to crack the whip or what the fuck ever other plot shit going on. And Ed Harley rolls up, like you said, on these fucking military dudes. And the wife made me cry laughing. She was like, oh, shit, check him out. He's wearing them Christina Aguilera chaps. Oh, no. Why oh, you got to do him like that? He's trying to be tough, boy. He's yes. trying to get dirty. <laughs> <laughs> And now I know they're just supposed to be like military fellows just being at their post. And even the fellow at the bridge, he's just like, listen, man, we're just trying to do our job. Just like, like, show us your papers. Your what What kind of papers? I don't know. I guess like yeah. registration for the bikes or something. Doesn't matter. Show us your papers. I don't understand why there wasn't any kind of urgency because, yes, you are two armed guards on a bridge. But 40 fucking dudes all on their own motorcycles just rolled up, clearly wanting to start shit. <laughs> We're at that point to where they're killing people now. Murder is happening. The biters are murdering, yeah. even though they've been murdering the entire time. And like you said, the guy's like, this ain't us, Chains. Dude shoves his hand in a fucking running, spinning motorcycle wheel. 
Yeah, like, I'm surprised they shied away from it, to be honest. I mean, they showed a dude get blown up by a single second grenade. We'll run into a guy who literally fucking explodes atop a motorcycle upon touching a car. But for some reason, like, when they shove the dude's hand in the motorcycle thing, the movie's like, no, gotta be classy. We gotta cut away. And he's like, I need a new bitch. <laughs> Oh, shit. There's acting going on with Stones whenever he comes back to meet up with old girl. And she ends up, like, kissing him or whatever. And man, um, oh, fucking man. She looks like she really, like, it's not acting on her part. Like, she really wants to kiss Brian Bosworth. Maybe this, like, whole thing was just, like, her in. Kind of like how What's-Her-Name got married to Steven Seagal after Hard to Kill. Someone married him? Yeah. <laughs> Did he break her leg? I think he threw her down a flight of stairs. Like, I'm which not even joking. Was, which one was hard to kill? I'm, I, I can't. Mother. <laughs> and he gets shot three times and it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's okay. He's got a goatee now. So Bosworth, now knowing semi what's going on with this crack the whip shit, has to go meet up with his liaison. And when he does, he's followed by our good friend Ice, William Forsythe. Mm -hmm. Not only was he following, he stopped off for a bacon cheeseburger and a blowjob. <laughs> yes, I'm going to say it every time William Forsythe is involved. Why? Because it's the best goddamn line I've ever heard that man deliver. And by God, does he deliver that with the utmost conviction. That wasn't in this movie, was it? Did I miss that? Did I watch no. this movie? I mean, there <laughs> might have been those two things possibly at the same time, but could have ended on the cutting room floor. Who knows? This turns into a showdown. And now Brian Bosworth, who, mind you, kills zero people until the very end of this movie, begins a fucking motorcycle chase with yep. ice. And this entire time, I see them zooming down the streets of Smallville, USA. I'm just like, this poor town. I feel like I, I can find the town. I feel like I should go there. Possibly apologize. <laughs> <laughs> they just have it, like, on the sign once you're entering. Now entering Bilksville, Alabama. <laughs> where they filmed Stone Cold, but don't oh, hold man. us against us. So don't that's why they renamed you. the town to Bosnia. Gotcha. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so in this chase, it's really Brian Bosworth. So kudos, Brian Bosworth. You're driving fast as fuck. Congrats. This is stunt William Forsythe that looks like <laughs> fake Diesel. I mean, listen, the fellow that they had as his stunt double might have looked just like his mannequin double when they lit him on fire. <laughs> We're jumping ahead a little bit, but man, the Bosworth stunt double, which was a dummy that fell through the glass a little bit later, looks so bad. Oh, man, it's it's amazing. Like, how do you fall from 60 feet through glass on your head and then jump up and murder 10 people? At this point, it's all adrenaline. He's just 100% murder boner. <laughs> like, you've just, like, you've stuffed some old jeans and, like, a denim shirt with some, some straw and leaves. Yeah. And just thrown it out of a copter. I used to make dumb movies as a kid, and we stuffed some clothes with newspaper and tossed it off a building. <laughs> I'm not ashamed of that, and neither should this movie. Back to the chase, because there's one scene that I do want to talk about, which blew my fucking mind, because it made... I know nothing in this movie makes sense, but it made no sense... But I think it's one of the best moments. Uh, William Forsythe, brrr, riding down the fucking interstate, super fast, stunt double, all that stuff. Uh, he does do a few times where he's on the motorcycle. I would say probably going 20 to 30 miles an hour, and he's willing to do those shots, which is awesome. Uh, he pulls up alongside of some fellow in a station wagon and is like, ah, and just cuts his arm. <laughs> like, why? I think the idea was that you had Boz on the other side of that car, and if you slice his arm, it'll maybe make him run into Boz on the motorcycle on the other side. I don't know. That's all I can think of, but that did seem real fucking random. And the fact that, like, it kind of wrapped up in the worst way possible, like, you know, they go through all this little nonsense, and what works is him just, like, pulling alongside him and just ramming himself into bad guy. You say ram. That was just, like, a little bump. A little love tap. <laughs> little love tap and just that's all you need just run him into a car car runs into a truck or something i don't know boom boom indeed he's like oh shit a chrysler lebaron yes and he fucking gets demolished instant fireball dude you're absolutely right what happens to william forsyth is fucking devastating like i know he's a piece of shit whatever stack on top nazi bad biker man but he <laughs> He almost had the same ending as that fucking melty dude from Roll Cop. He fucking exploded. 
Like, it's just nuts. You're not wrong. Dude, he blows up. Motorcycle bits go everywhere. You see the the, the dummy that's on the bike when it gets hit fucking Whoa. fly to pieces. And then the camera pans over as Boz boom, boom, rolls up and looks down at him. He's like, slightly charred. From all this, he's slightly charred. And he goes, yeah. fuck you, cop. Yeah. yeah and for some reason that's the most photogenic shot in the entire movie it's like the dp worked for 40 fucking seconds sometimes you just need to dp for 45 seconds <laughs> okay let's discuss this the next fucking scene is a viking funeral yeah. with his corpse how did they get it they just picked it off the road i guess <laughs> you know who's gonna stop a bunch of biker dudes trying to get other biker dude is that what we're doing right now a viking funeral i i guess but the way they have him strapped to his motorcycle which exploded by the way his horse i don't know uh, his horse <laughs> yeah he's just riding the battle because they got him like taxidermied in place i'm like there's no way this is anywhere near respectful <laughs> you guys if i die i don't care what you do but don't do this oh no man like Anything this else. was this was pretty fucking baller in my mind. He's getting to ride off into Valhalla at this epic biker rager. Gonna ride all the way to Mobile, Alabama. Oh, yes. He's getting his angel wings and riding all the way to Sturgis. Oh. oh. <laughs> He's going to that big kegger in the sky. <laughs> oh. Rip in peace, rip. Now there's suddenly a delivery of the drugs because business yeah. doesn't stop for no man, all right? And to my point earlier, like, how inept this fucking great cop is. Like, Boz is the man, right? That's why they called him in the first place. Not because he's the most white trash look of the bunch, because he's a he's a professional. This is his job. They immediately turncoat and just like, yeah, we're just taking the shit. And Bosworth puts up zero fight. He's like, all right, I don't like it, but I'm going to leave. It's like, I've changed the terms of our agreement. Pray that I do not change them further. <laughs> He's not even upset. He's like, okay. I'm so leaves. fucking mad. I'm going to go pout with Glenn. Yeah, 100%. And like, their little back and forth is like, so what happened? He took the truck. And, and with all due respect, he just has a look of just like, wow, we just put like a million fucking pounds of drugs in the street. But I guess that doesn't matter. We have another plan. It's amazing because the cops are like, we don't know where they took it. Uh-oh. And he goes, oh, man, he took the drugs. And then immediately, Brian Bosworth just goes, I got this. Doesn't tell the cops where the drugs are. Just no. rides up to the truck and explodes it with his manliness. <laughs> I mean, that's all you really need. Who needs flint and steel with a chiseled chin like that? Who needs steel when you got stone? <laughs> oh, well, he did say earlier he had balls of steel. Who else has got balls of steel? The fucking deporte. For whatever fucking reason, after being double-crossed, after being like, bro, we, we're on to you, this is your chance just to get the fuck out of here. Yeah, like, everybody knows at this point. Like, it's so nuts. Yeah, and he goes back and tries to act like nothing happened. And the little deporte guy comes out and he goes, dude, I know, I know, it was you. I when they're riding in the, the truck or whatever, and he gets the uh, the little call from the cops, the feds, whoever, and not Jennifer Connelly is in there, and she's like, oh my god, you're a cop. How did... Bitch, I told you I was a cop. Did you not believe me? Yeah, did you not see my Punisher shirt when I walked in? Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes. I love it. <laughs> but to your point, Brady, like how he comes back and tries to play it off, had me rolling. Because they're all just like, cop, cop, he's a cop. And he's just like... It's just like your opinion, man. <laughs> you know, that's yes, that's your opinion. And I respect it, but I'm not a cop. <laughs> Does he ever like outright deny that he's a cop? He's just like ignoring him. If if I'm a cop, then so fucking what? You're a cop too, and you're black. Dude, when, when the chick asks him, she goes, "Are you a cop? Tell me you're not a cop." He goes, "I'm a cop." You satisfied now? And she goes, "Huh." And then he gets busted again when the cops are on the radio. She goes, you're a fucking cop. He's like, I told you I'm a fucking cop. Yeah, it, it's kind of whatever. The whole thing is whatever. Like, nothing happens because of everybody ever learning that he's a cop. Other than well, he's piss poor at his job. The only thing that does happen is the deporte gets killed because the brotherhood never forgives. His street meat gets killed because Lance Hendrickson's like, I need a new bitch. <laughs> fucking blows her head off. And he's like, guess what? You're going to be my rebel angel. 
and I went, man, I guess, and he's going to blow him up as a distraction. Yeah, I guess as well, because when this happened, you know, he did the whole, like, deer hunter thing, and I'm like, okay, I get it, and then he just doesn't kill him on the spot. I'm like, this guy deserves whatever's going to happen to him. He's the dumbest piece of shit on the planet. These are facts, but he can't kill his boy because he loves him too much. Point break <laughs> reference again. Ah! <laughs> yeah, that's all that's going on. And so he puts on a priest outfit, becomes Father Lance, a.k.a. Caster Troy, <laughs> as fucking Long Tall Sally plays in the background, and they come <laughs> flying in in a Huey chopper. And Brian Bosworth is tied to the chopper itself, like through some steel and wires. Yeah. He fucking shreds this helicopter with brute force. All right, two things. When Lance Henderson successfully infiltrates this Capitol building with the utmost security in disguise as a father, I immediately said, why the fuck even be a Nazi biker when you can walk through that shit just with a stupid white thing around your neck? Like, he immediately just leveled up. He never even had to be that guy. He could just be priest man and just be fucking, like, I don't know, just be an assassin or something. Like, we it, can say, like, this was pre-9-11, and it was, this was 91, pre-9-11, but this wasn't pre-fucking everyone being stupid. But it, in this universe, in this boss universe, it fucking worked. Like, there's no point to him even being the bad guy that it was at that point. And two, like you mentioned, Bosworth, in the helicopter, shredding it to pieces, he fucking takes, like, you know, he's strapped to the helicopter, to random wires and he starts yanking shit out i'm like dude you're in this thing too yeah he's like grabbing like the uh some kind of fluid brake flu you don't have brake fluid in a helicopter i don't know what it is but he's like <laughs> squirting it on their face don't worry <laughs> that's the headlight fluid easily replaceable like what's his plan here like if that was something important and this starts to go down what is his plan he knows that he's invincible that's why he leaps from the helicopter through the skylight it lands on his head and stands up like nothing fucking happened. Man, what a fucking Duke Nukem move. I can't even... Yeah. I can't, any other parallel just pales in comparison. Yeah, he knows that he's going to survive no matter what because it's in the script. So he's just tossing his dummy around like it just doesn't even matter? Yes. It's just like, stunt double, stunt cock. Stunt <laughs> cock. So Lance Henderson is now in there. The bikers are riding into this fucking place. They mission accomplished. By the way, I want all the listeners to know the bikers technically succeed. They shoot yeah. everyone they're there to shoot, and then some. A hundred percent. Lance Hendrickson finds out that Bosworth is in there. He's like, I don't fucking care. Everybody, you're on your own. Split up. Job well done. That, okay, first of all, what in the fuck? Bosworth shows up when everybody's already eliminated, once more, great at his job. And the moment he sets foot on the property, Lance Henderson is like, all right, everybody, give up. We, we fucked. We're fucked. It's over with. Everybody fit for themselves. You know what? I'm out of here. He, too, has that foresight, foresight into the fact that he's in a movie. Uh, he's read the script. And much like the bad guy from Last Action Hero, he said, aha, as long as Bosworth's not here, we're going to succeed. Bosworth arrives. He goes, oh, it's over, man. Fucking bail. This is, uh, this is kind of an aside, and I don't want to get too topical, I guess would be the word, but you guys remember when racist biker gangs hated cops, like in this movie? Yes. Yeah. Okay, At some point. I'm no, I'm just saying, that does not seem to be uh, the current situation. Things have flip-flopped a little bit. Oh, yeah. What you're trying to say is that the cops are the bikers now, and Punisher shirts are just all the rage. Just saying, everybody wearing those thin blue lines now. <laughs> oh. Well, the line's gonna get a little thinner because we get like boss fight or just like the final showdown between the boss and fight? Lance Hendrickson. Boss oh, fight. Yes. Ah. Yeah. yeah, between he and Lance Hendrickson. And boy. Okay. So in movies like this, it always kind of catches me off guard when like the hero is just absolutely unstoppable a la Steve Seagal. But man, the boss is throwing middle-aged Lance Hendricks around like what you can only assume what happens to old people at retirement homes. Oh, fuck. Uh, I'm, I'm going to agree with that. And I also want to give a big high five to Lance for taking these bumps on that fucking clearly marble floor. Yes, he is shoved down so many flights of stairs. It is nuts. 
Now we did we did miss something that I want to talk about that made me chuckle. A motorcycle is used as a surface to air missile to take <laughs> out the helicopter a la Austin Powers. So as the mm. motorcycle shoots out the window at full speed, the helicopter just happens to be hovering in front of the window for whatever reason. The guy sees it, does the ah for probably 10 seconds before the motorcycle connects. It's just one of those things, right? Why was the motorcycle there? To drive into the helicopter. Why was the helicopter there? So it can be driven into by the motorcycle. That scene is right up there with, uh, I think it's just a little bit later, maybe a little bit earlier at this point. I don't fucking remember when Boz turns the corner and you see like the one of the bad guys looking out the window. He turns around and he shoots him with this shotgun and the dude goes back out of this window probably 30 feet out of this window oh yeah like, like straight out of it like straight up child's play at that point mm -hmm. uh yeah whenever he smashes into the top of the car that actually looks really fucking cool it actually looks super fucked up because that's the real was like dude are you okay you okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> you, know? you just landed on the hood of a fucking car are you good he's like oh, yeah okay. Kyla Baron. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same one that i got love it fucking ice i love it the little baron just returns Lance Henderson's been defeated. Uh, Brian Bosworth's all super mm. fucking bloody and sweaty. He's like, imagine the future, Chains, because you're not in it. Arrest this dude. And throws him down some more goddamn stairs. And like yes. you said, there's a yes. moment of diehard rip. Yeah, like 100% just absolutely tore the page out of the book. So the other fella pulls a gun, and his FBI handler shoots him in the back, and he falls off the railings. Hi, save the day. And I'm like, that is... Absolutely, Officer Winslow. He had a Winslow moment. He shot the dude. He falls off the balcony. He's like, huh, did I do that? Credit. Oh, whatever happened to Carl Winslow shooting me? <laughs> <laughs> Thank God Carl Winslow wasn't this much of a pussy through the whole movie. No, Carl fucking Winslow gave a shit. Uh, now I gotta go wash <laughs> my hands. Does anybody know where the washroom is? His lines had the conviction of like, Yes, katana means Japanese sword. <laughs> oh, man. 100%. Uh, having said all that, the boss saved the day? And he gets one of those, like, hero exits where he just, like, kind of walks into the distance. And we discussed it earlier, fellas, but, like, I guess he took the direction literally and the cameraman was just, like, absolutely said fuck it. Because, like, the dude not only walks past, like, the paramedics and all the cops, he starts walking in the public. He walks past the production line, and people have no fucking clue who he is. Is he coming back? He hasn't gotten his he hasn't gotten his check yet. Does he know that? Hey, but I let him go. You know when we go to this town, we'll like search for like they shot this whole thing. There's gonna be that old fella in the rocking chair, like ah, you know the stories that tell that he's still walking to this day. Okay, the camera stays on him for entirely too long. I wish it would have stayed on him even longer, and it's just like him sitting in the house eating like a bowl of cereal, and then shaving, then like oh, taking yeah. a shower, reading the paper the next morning, and then it just ends abruptly for no reason. You're like, what? Yeah, just go straight back to him in his apartment, just doing random shit, maybe some Pilates, like, playing with the lizard with his supermodel girlfriend. Oh, dude, yeah, there's. I totally forgot there was just a naked chick in his bed. No, she had to get up and go to work. I mean, whatever. I mean, that was the most subtle bitch leave I've ever seen. You're right. You're right. So to me, this movie was a lot of fun. Uh, I think because I love Steven Seagal movies, things like that, this hits fucking right the spot it needs to. I had a ball laughing at William Forsyth. I thought Bosworth had the look through certain, certain parts of the film. I, I, I got no complaints. I will sit here and watch a movie like this all day, every day. Okay, so objectively, this is not a good movie. Like, not anywhere near it. Everything is flat. Just baseline movie. Like, the movie just does the bare minimum for everything. There are some stand-up performances from Lance Hendrickson and uh, one-third of Leonard Skinner. But I just have to say, like, this movie has the ambition of a top-tier Hollywood action movie, but it has the technical know-how of an earnest movie. It's so fucking bizarre and just... There's so many shits not given. It amazed me. Like, watching this movie made me feel like I was just, like, glancing past the gorilla cage at the zoo. I was like, oh, man, they are flinging shit. Huh. All right, I'm on board. <laughs> Recommended. Yeah, for me, this movie was just bad. Uh, honestly, I think it was 
low effort. It was fairly poorly executed, poorly acted. Aside from, like, I can't say a bad thing about Lance Henriksen, but otherwise it was mostly poorly acted, mostly kind of classless, and thankfully, just like Brian Bosworth's NFL career, at 90 minutes, it really doesn't last very long, so it's not that big of a hit. Well, there you have it. That was Stone Cold. If you have any strong feelings about the movie or the show, leave it in that comment section below. Make sure you hit those like and subscribe buttons on whatever format you're watching this on. Subscribe so you don't miss what we've got brewing for you next. Get out there and follow us on social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Reddit. We're all over the fucking place, y'all. You can find us also anywhere. Podcasts are available. Give us a shot. If you do, I promise we're going to turn it on. I promise the next movie we talk about will not be Stone Cold. (laughs) 